Luke chapter 22 he says Simon Simon Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat but I have prayed for you so Jesus is presenting prayer as what we use to counter the work of darkness in every service I'm gonna be sharing perhaps an idea or, or or I'm sharing a principle that would help you be disciplined in prayer okay so tonight I'm just sharing this idea this is just the one idea that I want to show us Jesus is presenting prayer as what we do to counter whatever the devil wants to do or is already doing Simon Simon Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat but I have prayed for you now the first you is plural the second you is singular okay Satan has asked to sift all of you plural as wheat but I have prayed for you Simon that your faith may not fail that's my prayer point I'm not praying for you not to make mistake I'm not praying for you not to be attacked I'm praying that regardless of what you go through that your faith will not fail if you are the kind of person that likes to take notes this is point number two point number one prayer is what we do to counter whatever the devil is doing or intends to do number two Jesus is saying to us that prayer sustains faith the just shall live by faith everything we do as believers we do by faith if your faith is not going to fail it is because you make a habit of prayer I have prayed that your faith may not fail and when you have turned back strengthen your brothers verse 33 but he replied Lord I am ready to go with you to prison and to death Jesus answered I tell you Peter before the rooster crows today you will deny three times that you know me point number three good intentions are not good enough I need you to understand this tonight it's not enough that you want it without a discipline of prayer the capacity to execute what you want will not be there so you see this is Jesus speaking to Peter this is what has happened in the realm of the spirit you were not aware the devil has intentions let me say this to you sometimes when something bad happens to somebody the person will say I'm under attack when something good happens to the person the person says I am blessed please you need to understand that the spiritual activities going on over your life is not like that whatever you are whatever is manifesting is not the totality of what's going on that you are in a tough place and it looks like you've never been able to catch a break in a long time does not mean you are not blessed and that everything is nice and dandy does not mean that you are not under attack Peter was oblivious Jesus said listen there has been demonic activity concerning you the intention of the devil is to sift you as wheat and regardless of what is going on in your life or what you are experiencing I have prayed now watch this Peter was oblivious of the intention and the manifestations of the devil Peter was oblivious of the moves of Jesus in his life Peter was just that guy with his good intentions you understand Satan has sought to sift you as wheat I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail you will fail but your faith will not fail okay when you have been restored restored your brothers in other words you will not go as far as they will go they all had good intentions Peter said it and you know and that's why it's, you know it's good to confess but ladies and gentlemen please listen to me you may want to write this down a habit of confession that is not born out of a disciplined prayer life will not work because some people are just positive they just like to say positive things they just affirm you understand they just say the word you see putting the word of God on your lips is not enough you have to generate capacity in the place of prayer see listen to me he said it in the presence of Jesus he made the confession I'm not going to deny you I am ready to go to prison with you and Jesus looked at him and smiled <laughs> based on the things that have happened based on the things that have been set in place your good intention is not enough tonight you will deny me three times before daybreak and you know the story Peter 
in the flesh tried and that's why you see you can't be an effective believer in the flesh that you want it is not enough that you desire it is not enough you have to birth it in the place of prayer tell your neighbor good intentions are not good enough See, I've never met anybody who wakes up in the morning and says to himself, I'm going to work today, I'm going to get fired. I've never met anybody who says, I'm going to my business and I'm going to annoy all my customers. I've never met anybody who says, this person that loves me, I'm going to see to it that this person breaks up with me today. Nobody says that. Nobody goes to school and says, I'm going to fail my exams. We all have good intentions. Peter said, even if it is prison, I am going with you. Jesus said, desire is not enough. Good intentions, not enough. Tonight, in spite of your good intention and your confession in front of witnesses, you will deny me three times. Hallelujah. Let's jump to verse 39. I'm, sharing, I'm just sharing the thought with you tonight and then we're going to pray. Verse 39. Verse 39. Let me go back to principle number one so that you can follow me logically. I said number one. Jesus said, prayer is what we do. To counter the oppression of the devil. Okay? You must have a disciplined prayer life. To counter whatever it is that the devil okay, wants to do against you. Number two, prayer will sustain your faith. Because, number three, good intentions are not enough. You see, that thing, that confession of faith, a disciplined lifestyle of prayer, is what will back off this, I want it to happen to me. It's going to come to pass in the name of Jesus. It's not enough. Are we getting this? So let's go verse 39 now. Jesus now began to show them Exactly how to what? How to bring it to pass. He said in verse 39, Jesus went out as usual. Somebody said as usual. Say it again, as usual. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. This is the next point. Jesus had a place where he prayed regularly. Prayer was habitual for Jesus. So should it be to you. Some people pray when they are in trouble. Some people pray when they feel like praying. Some people don't pray because they say to themselves, I don't know what to pray about. All right? We are in this series called what, The Place of Prayer. Now, you need to understand we're talking about the place where you pray. But much more than that, we're also talking about the role of prayer in your Christian life. Do you understand? There are times you pray because you have a need. The dimension of prayer I'm talking to you about tonight is the discipline of prayer. It's not because you have a need. It's not because you, have, you need God to do something for you. This dimension of prayer we're talking about is what you do to build spiritual capacity. So it was not because Jesus was going to the cross. It was not Jesus because Jesus wanted to perform a miracle. It was usual for Jesus to go to the Mount of Olives to pray. Tell your neighbor for me, you should have a place where you pray regularly. Now listen to me, you can pray anywhere, you can pray anytime, but the discipline of prayer requires that you have a place and a time that you pray. You have other times. Let me explain it to you this way, it's like a marriage. Husband and wife, we can talk anywhere. Okay? We can anywhere. But we must have a place. And after some time, we have times where we fellowship capital f capital h capital p okay david said he said he that dwells in the second place of the most High shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge he is my fortress he is my god not our god you understand so you've got to have a place a time where you and god fellowship and the dimension of prayer we're talking about is the discipline of prayer. It's not about, ah, Father, I have a need. It's about, I pray to build spiritual capacity. Because it's not enough to want it. Let me explain it in another way. You see, conception is the easiest when it comes to having children. The easiest part of the process is conception. Okay? The easiest. After that, then you have, you know, the gestation you have to sleep right. You have to eat right. You have to exercise right. Now, there are certain things they will tell you while your baby is growing. Don't let any pregnant woman fool you. They just, the tummy is just growing. There's nothing they are doing. It's just growing. But there are some things they are supposed to be doing. And there are some things they are supposed not to be doing. Not because of now, but because of then. I tell married women, I mean, pregnant women and this, you know, everybody is taking juice. You are drinking with them. I smile. They are taking cake, you are taking it with them. And this is what I tell them. The time is going to come. It will be only you and by yourself, 
it will be time to push. Then that baby inside you would have become 4.5. And you will have to push it by yourself. That is when all the sugar you have eaten and your lack of exercise will... You understand what I'm saying? It's the same thing with prayer. Listen, the seven sons of Sceva, listen, they did not do anything wrong. The problem was that they confronted the devil without spiritual capacity. Because they used the name of Jesus. Forget the fact that they added the fact that Paul preached the name of Jesus. Is it a lie? They said in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. If they had not added whom God Paul preaches, it was still the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is like sword. It's not enough to carry the name. You have to have capacity to wield it. They said in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached, they cast you out. The demon said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? You have not registered in the realm of the spirit. We don't know who you are. We have carried you and we have found you wanting. Because you lack spiritual capacity. Are you getting this? So the Bible said Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. It is a habitual thing for him to go to the Mount of Olives. And then the Bible said what? And his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, this is the teachable moment. He said, pray that you will not fall into temptation. In other words, you pray, this is another principle. Number what now if you're writing down? Is it four or five? Just number it. Some people will get 10, some will get 20. Okay? Just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He says, this is it. You pray before temptation, not during temptation. Do you understand? If you are going to testify every time you were tempted and that was when you started praying, you fell. If anybody's going to give me a witness now, it looked like scriptures failed you. Come on, all the singles say amen. amen. Married people who used to be single say amen. amen. Yeah, it's under the blood, but it happened. Amen. amen. You are there already, cold as, you know, everything. That's when you are now remembering scripture. My body is the temple of the Lord. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is the temple of the I am wondering, this thing is not working. Hey, my body is in the name of Jesus. I command you. I command you. I command you. Amen. And you're wondering, why is it not working? You don't pray in temptation. You pray just like the pregnant woman. You exercise. You control your diet. You take the right nourishment. Before it's time for you to push, Jesus said to them, pray. So that you will not what? Fall into temptation. You may want to write it down. This is what he was saying in essence. If you are prayerless, falling is inevitable. If you are prayerless, Falling is inevitable. Now, when we say falling now, now, I know the way I use that illustration. Everybody's mind is in fornication and not adultery. That's not what I'm talking about. There are times, how many of you have you've lost your temper, grieved the Holy Spirit, and then you know, I could have reacted differently. You fell. It was a temptation. You fell. Because you see, things that cause men to sin are bound to come. But that you are tempted does not mean you should fall for it. There was a time God wanted you to use his money in a particular way. And then the devil swayed you in another direction, and then you fell. If you fall in the day of adversity, your strength is small. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man make it what? Do you understand? So Jesus said to them, pray. Temptation is coming. And the only way you are not going to fall, sometimes you are tempted to quit. Okay, you've been trusting God. There's not been manifestation, but you, you grow tired because you what? You stop praying. Now, you did not quit because it did not happen. You quit because you lacked capacity to go on. And that capacity is generated in the place of prayer. He told them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Let me show to you tonight the power of prayer. Listen, it is not about the subject of prayer. It is not about the words of your prayer. It's not about what you are praying about. The fact that you are praying, God will respond to you with power. Because what happened to Jesus here is not the direct response to his prayer. If he had prayed this prayer to you, what would you have said? You would have explained to him. The reason why he has to go to the cross, have you? You would have told him, my son, no, no, you have to drink of the cup. No, all the Bible says the angel came and strengthened him. 
Are you getting this? The angels came and strengthened him. And if you check your Bible very well, that is what happens. Regardless of what you are praying about, you leave the place of prayer with strength. You leave the place of prayer with strength. At least you need you to understand. You see, we're still going to go back. I didn't say we're going to get there because we're actually going back. You need to understand praying to God to accept and to receive things is elementary. You know, I need a pair of shoes. I need a pair of shoes. Listen, you need to get mature to that point where you don't come into God's presence asking for things. Not because you don't need things, but you know how things come. Seek ye first his righteousness, I mean the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. We're not saying you don't have need for them. We're not saying they are not going to come, but they cannot be your preoccupation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the dimension of prayer we're talking about, fuck me, think about it. If you were Jesus, would you even be praying at this time? He was 33, he's still single. Amen. You know, if, if Jesus had lived at our time, we would have called him a failure. Yeah. By the time he died, we would have called him a failure. Yeah. The guy at 33 is desperately single. There were just some rumors around. At the point, they said there was something between him and Mary. But there was really nothing to show for it. And then he died a criminal's death. No property. He didn't buy land. He didn't build a house. He didn't marry. So he just came and he just went like that. Amen? How many of you are glad for Jesus? How many of you are grateful that Jesus died like that? Listen, it is in the place of prayer where it's not about God, give me this, God, give me that. But I want capacity for my destiny. It will reveal to you what your destiny is. I'm telling you the truth. So you've got to go past that level. I can't remember the last time. Say, Father. No. No. Hallelujah. Just hold your neighbor's hand. Hold your neighbor's hand. Tell that person, say, come to the next level with me. Tell that person, please, come to the next level with me. Okay, let's read on tonight. Okay, verse 41 now. is We drew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if, it's, if you be willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Hallelujah. And strengthened him. Verse 44, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. <laughs> I'm going to show you something. Being in anguish, he prayed more, let's read on because of time, okay? He prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Tell your neighbor for me, pay attention. Tell the person, this is the message. This is the message. This is the message. Jesus' response to agony was prayer. The disciples' response to sorrow was sleeping. You know the difference? The habit of prayer before the anguish came. Do you understand? When you make a habit, you can write down. Next point. I'm, I'm, I've lost count now. When you make a habit of prayer, when challenges come, your default response will be prayer. And the capacity to surmount the challenge will be generated in the place of prayer. So if you are looking for a reason to make a habit of prayer, it is because when challenges come, prayer would have mastered me. Oh, do you get that? Prayer would have mastered. See, let me say this to you. My ladies, please listen to me. Okay, all the women in the house, listen, I'm your pastor. I love you with the whole of my heart, not as much as I love my wife, but you understand what I'm saying? I love you with agape, I love her with agape and filio and eros. You understand? But I love you, agape. Don't let anybody deceive you that you are a woman and you should be controlled by your emotions. Because I look around and I see my sisters responding to life emotionally and giving the excuse, I am a woman. But when it is time for us to distribute privileges, you remember that there's neither male nor female in Christ. I love you. I love you. You need to get this. You need to get this. A lot of marriages are under pressure because the, the woman would rather be emotional than respond with prayer. 
You understand what I'm saying? We've all seen the, uh, what's it, what's it, is it War Room now? What's the title of that movie? Okay? And you see the younger lady responding sentimentally, emotionally, and the older woman says, have you prayed about it? Take it to the place of prayer. Not, how can, how can, he, how can, he, how can he be chatting with somebody overnight with me? Listen, do you still want him to be your husband? Do you want all your investments to go away? If the answer is no, then don't respond emotionally. Go to the place of prayer. It's the same thing for guys. You have a female boss and then you are egotistic. How can she talk to me? How can she talk to me? If you are not her boss, she can talk to you anyhow. If you respond in the place of prayer, you will be lifted. Are you, you're, you're getting what I'm saying? Because some people, look, they, they name the name of Jesus, but they don't follow the example of Jesus. Being in agony, he prayed. They were asleep because of sorrow. To be asleep is to quit, is to give up, throwing the towel. And that's what so many people do. Things are tough, so I stop praying. I stop reading my Bible. I stop going to church. I know some of us even threatening God with backsliding. Say, God, if nothing happens, if things don't change, I will backslide, though. Let me tell you God's response to, the, to you. Not today. It's not, I have many like you. You know, like you told Elijah. I have many that have not bowed the knee. It's the same way I have many that have threatened. They will later wake up to find out. Listen, you cannot stop God's purpose from coming to pass. You can only disqualify yourself from playing a part in it. I'm telling you. God told Abraham, your sons will be slaves in Egypt for 400 years and I will deliver them. I will take them to a land flowing with milk and honey. That prophecy came to pass. But the people that left were not the people that entered. Because they disqualified themselves by unbelief. Listen to me, regardless of what you are going through, the word of God cannot be broken. What, what am I going to do not to quit, not to give up before my miracle manifests? Prayer. And this is the challenge. Somebody is saying, I've asked God for it. So why should I be asking? It's a prayer of faith. I've asked him. I believe he has done it. That's not the kind of prayer we're talking about. We're talking about being in the place of prayer to generate capacity so that you stay till your miracle happens. We have them that believe until the saving of the soul. Hallelujah. Let's read it again. And being in anguish, verse 44, he prayed more earnestly. Ah. Being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. It is not normal. Counterintuitive that when things are tough, I pray more. But if you make a habit, he used to go as usual to the Mount of Olives. So when anguish came, he did what he was used to doing. We thought our older, I mean, the older generation, we thought they, they got it wrong. We said they were casco. We said they were old school. But have you noticed that prayer was their response for everything? Yeah. When they come to visit you before they sit down, Ejekagbadra. When they are ready to go, Ejekagbadra. You have delivered a baby, they come to visit you in the hospital, Ejekagbadra. They enter the bus. Okay? As the bus is about to go, Ejekagbadra. And we got to the point, so it's because you don't understand the word. Okay, the Bible says he has given his angels charge over me lest I dash my foot against a stone. I can leave my house without prayer. It's not the prayer I pray that morning that would generate, let me guarantee the fact that God will protect me. We're not talking about the fact that God responds to your prayer to protect you. We are saying when it's time for you to do what you have to do, you lack capacity because you keep giving excuse for not praying. So after some time, you have a pattern of not praying. You are prayerless. So you may not pray when you start the journey. You may not pray when you visit the person at the hospital. But do you have a time and a place where you pray habitually? Let me say this to you. Anytime anybody is arguing over a basic principle of Christianity, no matter the strong arguments they bring forth, they are not doing it. Ah, you will get it next week. No giver argues about giving. Check it very well. The stronger the argument, that is proof he's not doing it at all. Have the poor people in Lagos reduced? Shabi, they said they want to give to the poor. The poor is not feeling it. They were just talking. As the church reduced, we are still doing massive projects. You know the reason why? They cannot affect us because they were not giving before. 
You understand? The argument is just so that they can justify the turmoil going on inside them. And I tell you, what do you mean? You, you pray, you pray. Listen, if you're a person of prayer, you may not agree with the, the person is praying, but you will not argue with the fact that the person is praying. It's a non-issue. You understand what I'm talking about? You say, no, the way you people are singing, if you, you, the song, when you argue too much about the song, you really don't have a worship lifestyle. Because if there's anything you know about God, God accepts it and then teaches them later. So don't let anybody tell you you are not doing it right. They want to stop you from doing it at all. Yeah. This is what I tell people. Never take instruction or advice from anybody until you see their results. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when they tell you, oh, you don't need to pray like that, you should, just tell them, show me how you pray and show me the results you have produced by the way you pray. By their fruit, we shall know them, not by the soundness of the argument. By their fruit, we shall know them. Not by the soundness of... Some people are professors of theology and they don't know Jesus. Amen? So They prayed all the time. They prayed all the time. They may be wrong in the prayer point. They may be wrong in how they pray. They may even be wrong in the names of the people they call as they are praying. God says, I don't have issues with the technicalities. I hope you know God does not have issues with the technicalities. Say, I want to pray in the name of the God of Vera. As long as the God of Vera is the living God, God says, leave him alone. After some time, he will understand. Amen? Tell your neighbor, let's stop arguing. Let's just pray. Come and tell that person, let's just pray. Somebody says, no, no, you should not be praying in tongues. Can we just pray? Amen? Amen. So can we just pray? Say so they are praying in tongues too much. Okay, it's okay. Can we just pray? Hallelujah. So, so that prayer point, he did not use the right scripture. Oh, it's okay. Let's just pray. Tell your neighbor, just pray. Just pray. Hallelujah. Just pray. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Write this down. When you make a habit of prayer, prayer will be your default response to challenges. If not, you will buckle under pressure. Matthew 26 now, we want to look at the Matthew account, and let's look at, it's the same text, but look at the explanation of Matthew, and you know, it gives us more light. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 41 says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. In case you don't understand anguish. In case you don't understand anguish. He began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. You know, because we would have said anguish, the Greek word for the word anguish, because if you look at it from the Greek, really, the word translated anguish was different from the word translated sorrow. But when you read it from the Matthew account, you will notice it's just semantics. Do you understand? Because Matthew explains what he said. Okay, let me read it again. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. So what is his response? Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Luke helped us to understand the reason why they were sleeping. The same sorrow that led them to pray is the same sorrow that led them to sleep. Hallelujah. Okay. Verse, uh, it's okay. No, so he said to them, couldn't you keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. That in fast, that when he left them and came back, he was gone for at least an hour. Hello? How many of you will be troubled? You are pained. Things are not going the way and you are in the place of prayer for one hour. Amen? And for, 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 for those of us with the word of faith background, 
this habit of praying at least one hour every day. This is where it came from. Do you understand? At least one hour every day. I'm going to give you the lazy man's approach to praying one hour every day. Do you understand? You know there's no clock in heaven. So we're not going to be legalistic about it. How many of you here don't like praying for long? Let me see your hand. I'm, I'm your apostle tonight. I don't like praying for long too, but let me show you a secret. Are you here? How many minutes make one hour? 60 minutes, Abi. Uh -huh. All we need to do is break the 60 minutes realistically in the course of your day. So you can do 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at noon, 20 minutes in the evening. And you would have prayed one hour. And that guy that disturbs all his neighbors, for the next one hour, you are praying the same one hour. Do you understand? And you can pray anywhere. For it to be disciplined, you need to get this. We're not sentimental, we're not legalistic. But for you to be disciplined, especially in the beginning, you can time yourself. And we have the benefit of praying in the Holy Ghost. So you can't say, I don't even know what to pray about. Always remember, it's not about the answer to this prayer. It's not about my needs. It's about the discipline of prayer. I'm developing spiritual capacity. You can do it while you cook. You can do it while you're driving. A powerful man of God in the U.S. In fact, I felt violated when he said it first. That every day, his time with God is in his car on his way to work. It was later it dawned on me that some of them drive up to an hour just to go to work. So he says, going to work and coming back, I play worship music and I pray every morning. Somebody now says, no, 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 no. When you want to pray to God, you have to be on your knees. You see where we are going now? Tell your neighbor, just pray. Let's just pray. Let's, when we start praying regularly, then we start praying on our knees. You know, some people, you have to kneel down and clasp your hand. This, this is the one I don't understand. They say we should bow our hearts. I've always wondered, how do you bow your heart? They say, bow. <laughs> Did they hear it for the first time? I'm like, does it really mean that? So bow your heart. I was like, bow. I you know that's how some people pray. You understand? And there are some people that do it every morning and every evening. Family altar. Amen? Tell your neighbor, let's just pray. Yes. See, there's no hard and fast rule. Do it the way you want. The most important thing is that we are praying. Amen? Hallelujah. Alright? Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you... Men, keep watch with me for one hour. He asked Peter, verse 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That was why Peter was able to tell Jesus, I will go to prison with you. His spirit was willing, but there was no capacity in his flesh. There's a funny way Yoruba said, Oh, Moko, <laughs> He said, you're joking. <laughs> and there are so many people like that. Okay, I don't even know how to translate that in English because it does not make theological sense. Okay? But what it means is he wants it, but it's not his destiny. <laughs> that's, that's the literal meaning. But what I mean is sometimes you really, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, a lot of times our, our mouth draws checks, our hearts cannot cash. You're, you want something that capacity cannot deliver. So should I give you an example? How many of you right now, you, you, you just want to walk out of this service and it's going to be a brand new 2019 Honda Accord outside there waiting for you. Brand new tier nylon. Anybody like that? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you know some people as I'm talking, if I ask the same person that lifted up his or her hand, what's a radiator? The person does not know. The person does not know. So what's tire pressure? This one has happened before. We went to dedicate a car. The owner of the car did not know how to open the bonnet. It was this guy who had been driving it for a number of days. So we, you know the way we used to, God bless our hearts, you know the way we used to pray? We have to see the engine now. <laughs> to dedicate a car, we must see the engine. So we told him to open the bonnet. He couldn't open it. He was fiddling with it. That was the day it dawned on me. Ah, sometimes knowledge can be overrated. Though. I knew the bonnet. I knew everything in the engine. But I did not have the car. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Some of you listening to me, you can drive trailer. <laughs> the only problem is you don't have... <laughs> you know people like that? When you go for wedding, you are the one that will be everybody, every, everybody to park. They want to carry cooler from there. You are the one that will move it. You drive Benz, you drive B2, you drive everything. But when you are going home, you enter BRT. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet and let's pray tonight.